The agenda for this video is to see the supply planning functionality in NetSuite. This is the follow-up step after creation of the demand planning which we saw in a separate video. Over here we'll start with creation of an item supply plan, step number one. Then we'll review the output of that generated supply plan. And lastly we'll take a look at item inventory setup. Here we can see the supply planning parameters which affect how a supply plan is generated by the system. We'll be logging into NetSuite by using a web browser and by navigating to www.netsuite.com URL. And that will bring us to this login screen. Over here I'll be using my credentials to log in. My username and password have been entered here. And that brings us to the NetSuite dashboard. As you can see I've logged in to the purchasing and inventory managers role for this video. And this rule has been given access to all the procurement to pay as well as inventory related functionality. The first thing that you can notice is that the dashboard has been customized for this particular user. I'm using this layout with three columns. The first column has reminders, KPI meters, some trend related graphs. The middle column has KPIs, navigation portlets, so on and so forth. And the third column has inventory trend, shortcuts, so on and so forth. Every user may customize it based on whatever his requirements may be, whichever functionality he uses on a regular basis and what functionality or what data he wants to see when he logs into the application first time. Since this is the inventory manager's role, he also has access to some drop-down menus which are specific to his role, some activities, shipping related functionality, receiving inventory reports and so on and so forth. A different role will have different menus to be accessed. And role-based functionality is a security feature in NetSuite where you can restrict which roles have access to which kind of data and who accesses which transactions, so on and so forth. Every organization may define their own f definition of a role and they can define which functionality each role has access to. As of now, these are the roles that I have access to in this organization and our functionality today will be based on the inventory manager's role. In this video, we are going to see the supply planning functionality in NetSuite. A supply plan can be created based on an existing demand plan for that item. We saw the creation of a demand planning for an item in a separate video. In this video, we are going to talk how we can move forward and create a supply plan based on the existing demand plan for that item. We are currently on the item demand plans screen in NetSuite. From here, we can already click on generate item supply plans. And over here I can specify which subsidiary I'm creating an item supply plan for, the location for which the supply plan will be valid, the location and item type uh, I can filter based on my requirements at this moment. I can also specify the date uh, from which I want to create a supply plan, the start date and the end date here. So I'm just going to extend the end date beyond six months because my demand plan was created for the next six months. I have projected for the next six months how much demand I will be expecting for this item. Samsung Galaxy Note. I'm going to select this here. So since this is a filtered list I'm only seeing one item but I could also remove this filter and see all the items available for supply planning but currently I'll be using this item. On clicking submit I have been brought to the item supply plans screen where I can see all the supply plans that have been created I can also filter based on location and sub items in case we have a lot of supply plans being created. I can see that the latest supply plan was created today and I can click on this button to see what the supply plan shows. And over here I can see this item supply plan has a number. It was created for a subsidiary US1, US West DC and it was created for this item, Samsung Galaxy Note. And you can also see what has been uh, created as the plan. So you can see the order dates. System also shows you the receipt dates. Now these receipt dates are based on the lead time you've, that you've set up for this item. And the type of order that you are predicting as part of the supply plan. And we're also seeing the quantities. How these quantities are being calculated, we can see in a moment. But first we'll have to go back to the demand plan and see what the demand was so that we can compare it against the supply plan. So over here I can see the demand plan for Samsung Galaxy Note. 
and the monthly calculated demand was 40, 33, so on and so forth. And this can be compared against the supply plan where I'm ordering a thousand quantity on this date, the 25th of December, 20 on 15th of January, 20, so on and so forth. An easier way to compare this is to go into more and see gross requirements inquiry. And this shows you a side by side comparison of your quantity on hand and whatever you have planned to purchase versus whatever demand has been created in the system. So I can see that on this date, there is an existing demand of 1000 quantity because there was a sales order which was entered into the system for this quantity. And the quantity on hand goes to minus 976 because it began with 24. And then a planned purchase order has been created here, which leaves the effective on hand quantity is 34 because 1010 minus 976 becomes 34 so on and so forth so we can go back to our item supply plan and we see that the planned purchase orders are of quantity 1010 20 20 100 and 10 even though our demand is not in any multiples of 10 it could be 40, 33, 26, so on and so forth. Now these values are being taken uh, for ordering based on a fixed quantity and that quantity is being uh, brought from the item master. So to give you some more detail, I'll go back to the item master. And over here under the inventory tab for Samsung Galaxy Note, I can see that some parameters have been set up for different locations. So for US West DC, the DC which we are calculating the supply plan for, a safety stock of 25 has been set up and a fixed lot size of 10 has been set up, which means every time we place an order for this item, it will be in a multiple of 10. And the system will always try to maintain a safety stock level of 25, even though there might not be any demand for this item at that point in time. And then we'll circle back to the item supply plan. And we can see that the quantities are in multiples of 10 since our fixed lot quantity. A little bit more information in the gross requirements summary. You can see that the safety stock level shows as 25. So even though my quantity here has become 10, I'm the system is trying to maintain a safety stock of 25 at any given point in time. And that's how we create item supply plans in NetSuite. Now these item supply plans can be taken forward and items can be ordered based on these supply plans which means purchase orders can be raised and we'll see that in a separate video. Thanks for watching.